Hey Willy Wonka, have you a game? Or like other spin-offs, are you just lame? You come a long way, Charlie Bucket. Such a long way, in fact, that you're barely recognizable. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for the Xbox has taken so many liberties with Roald Dahl's original story that it may seem hard to recognize. You may also have trouble recognizing it as anything resembling a video game. The story now makes Charlie the writer of all wrongs committed by the other children. It's up to Charlie to choose Violet, for example. Wonkabots, Charlie's peculiar adversaries in the game, are created by Mike TV. The Wonkabots were being created to replace the already enslaved Oompa Loompas. This title trots along with tenacious tedium, draining color from the faces of even the youngest of players. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. The game begins in relatively familiar territory, with Charlie and Gramps trying to gain access to Mr. Wonka's air-polluting factory of wonder. Young Charles's initial challenge is to grab the catch necessary to obtain the ticket. This, of course, becomes a whimsical analogy of self-determined capitalism. Charlie's desperate clutching to escape the grim poverty of his grandfather starts with this green cash sprout and ends on top of Mr. Wonka's chocolate chair. Master of all that's sweet. The problem is, as you progress through the game, you'll begin to realize the tedium supplied by the title's fatally flawed control system. Buttons at times needed to be depressed repeatedly to make certain things happen. The controller to character response ratio was noticeably inaccurate, making platforming a pain in the keister and objective repetition far too common. The game is insulting, aiming at the perceived lower expectations of kid gamers. We at SA believe that kids don't deserve crappy games. Very few kids will finish this title based on the inaccurate controls and flat sameness of much of the environments. Many of the rooms and objectives seem to repeat. Just when you think you've completed an objective, like freeing Augustus Gloop, yes, he's out of the pipe. You have to repeat the objective in a similar environment. No, he's back in the river. Wait. Charlie's combat system is candy-based and sides more on the sweet rather than the mighty. <laughs> There's very little satisfaction when vanquishing villains, and there's very little taste to this title. I mean, it rubs our rhubarb to try and foist this crap on a kid, or adult that may have enjoyed the book or movies the title is based on. Don't get suckered. Don't buy it or rent it. Read it and love it. With stale chocolate breath, we breathe a one out of five. own a Wii, chances are you've played your fair share of games featuring Mario and his band of associates. While some carry a decent reputation for being quality games, Mario Sports Mix is unfortunately not one of those games. Mario Sports Mix takes four familiar sports, basketball, volleyball, hockey, and dodgeball, and injects them with that over-the-top flair you'll find in most Mario games. That means flashy super moves, power-ups, and some uniquely designed arenas. You get two modes for each sport with gameplay that's fairly straightforward. Use the nunchuck to move around while you shake the Wiimote and press the A or B to perform some moves. The game is easy to learn and fun for a little while, especially when you play with friends. But the gameplay lacks any complexity to engage you for longer than a few short spells. There aren't a variety of moves to execute, and even these don't always register when you shake the Wiimote. The absence of any Motion Plus support also doesn't help the game any either. Party mode might seem like a good diversion from the other modes, but it gets just as repetitive. Don't get us wrong, it's a great looking game that can provide some bouts of fun, but its gameplay is just far too simple to maintain interest for long. Your kids and younger relatives might enjoy it, but if you're looking for something with a little more depth, you might want to look elsewhere. A two oh, no! out of five. Again. They've owned your television sets for decades, made their movie debut this past summer, and now, America's favorite dysfunctional family will once again take over the video game world. And no, I am not talking about the Kardashians. The smart one! The Simpsons game lets players take full control of America's beloved four-fingered family. Just like Hit and Run and the arcade classic, this Simpsons game is surprisingly enjoyable, capturing the witty humor from the show's early years. I don't think I was sober for one minute of medical school. Am I supposed to be impressed? This title plays like a typical 3D platformer, with each character possessing their own unique abilities. Homer can inflate to a giant ball. 
Bart does the Bart Man. I'm like Spider-Man in a Batman costume. Lisa uses the powers of Buddha to solve puzzles, and Marge rallies local residents into rowdy mob. Gee, it'd be a shame if an unruly mob destroyed that statue. EA's rendition of Springfield captures the show's spirit, look, and most importantly, the humor. El yo-yo es grande! The presentation is spot on with colorful graphics. I don't think I've ever seen such a beautiful sight. And the oh-so-familiar soundtrack. Spending that extra cash to acquire the show's voice talent as well as hiring the show's writers was a great move by EA. I had a children's aspirin and I feel lightheaded. Going through each mission or just simply prancing around a town, you'll encounter all the major and minor characters you have grown to love over the years. Can anyone tell me what Sideshow Mel is? Weird. I was going to ask you the same thing. However, not all is sunny in Springfield. There's no innovation when it comes to the gameplay. Moves are very limited and repetitive. Rehashing themes over the past two decades might be what makes The Simpsons successful in TV land, but there isn't anything worth writing about when it comes to the controls. I am the greatest! The camera angles, like oh so many platformers, has major issues. And let's be honest, you can probably beat this in less than six hours. You're accredited to obsessive nerds everywhere. But we'll look past all that because the snarkiness is spot on. It's like watching an eight hour marathon of good Simpsons episodes. Unlocking video game cliches. Nice work, video game guy. Making fun of everybody in the gaming industry. Insulting their own developer and their yearly football franchise makes this game worth playing. You'll find yourself looking around for references and parodies, not noticing how generic this title really is. Oh, I don't get any of these references. You even get to fight Simpsons creator, Matt Groening. I can't believe he has the ego to put himself into one of his own scripts. Who the hell does that? Sadly, The Simpsons lacks an online multiplayer mode. This game is for the fans that love the show and enjoy good humor aimed towards our industry. I kicked your butt! Yes, it has many flaws, but the funny outweighs it all. I gotta find my baby mama and escalate! Three chocolate-covered bunnies. It's even bigger than Marge's butt. Out of five. Am I supposed to be impressed? <laughs> This here's a game for all the fellas. Try to do what that x -blade tells us. Get so sad because you like puzzles. Play the DS like a dog with muzzles. Okay, Linus, take your stylus. Play this game like you're on the no-fly list. You say you want a game with a funky groove? Well, we've got one, and it's Bust a Move. With dual screen fishing and some wishing, your slingshot ways will complete the whole mission. By flipping bubbles from the bottom screen up to the top for a sight to be seen. There's no frustration in the DS Nation to stay in the game like Wise Perry Mason. Nothing's complicated, you may never lose. It's that kind of game, it's bust a move. City. Gamers are busy. There's just no time for a long game tizzy. That's why this game has something to say about how long or short you want to play. Different mazes, different phases, almost as fun as yearly raises. There's a nice choice of modes with something to prove. It's got what you need. It's bust a move. Your best friend Adam, don't call him Adam, likes puzzle games like a young John Batham. This game's got more soul than that guy John Mayer. If you got friends, you've got multiplayer. The characters and graphics give off a funky jive. That's why we give this game a 4 out of 5. Someday, I swear, I'll visit the loo. But until then, I'll just bust a move. How a plumber with the 7th grade reading level continues to be a presence in video games confounds us all. He must have connections. Gandolfini-like connections. I've already said too much. And now Mario takes his reputation, his deadbeat brother, and all his fair weather friends to the DS for Mario Kart. I know what you're saying. I read your posts. We've seen Mario Kart before. Why should we care? This time out. Because Mario pops his internet cherry by taking his ragtag carter to the mysterious world of online play. Here we go! Yes, online. A magical place of wonder, information, and penile enhancements. Find that out-of-state friend and see you as what it takes to win that beloved mushroom cup. Fish bootlegs not included. Eek 
you've traveled this road with Mario, or his devious doppelganger Wario, nothing here will surprise the Mario Kart veteran in you. There's over 30 different tracks. Some of these tracks you'll know. Some you'll be meeting for the first time. Like the DK Pass, with snowballs the size of the late John Goodman. Oh, oh he's not dead. My, my bad. And I ain't seen nothing like this track in any amusement hall. Hey, how about them power-ups? Mario loves power-ups. Daisy loves power-ups. We all love power-ups. Remember that old turtle shell toss, don't ya? Well now, there's more. Like the squid attack. See that black ink? That's squid juice. All the Nintendo characters you pity so much are back. With their lifetime contracts and all, it's not like they have a choice. There's Luigi, Fredo to Mario's Michael. I know it was you, Luigi. You broke Mario's heart, Luigi. You broke his heart. If you're a fan of random De Niro movies from the 80s, then you may like the mission mode. Kind of simple, really. Travel around tracks, picking up power-ups, or battling big bullies. It's all good. Ever race along the top of a Nintendo DS system? Where does the game begin and reality end? There's a nice use of the DS system in the balloon battle. Just blow on the DS to blow up your balloon. The object here? Burst the other racer's balloons just like the man burst my dreams! And dare we say this is the best kart race we've seen? Oh, we dare. We dare. And now it's online. Let's face it, it's Mario's world. We just play in it. The track is jammed with Nintendo heroes on a last chance power drive. Mario's out on the run tonight, but there's no place left to hide. We give Mario Kart for the DS our highest rating with a 5 out of 5.